Hey everyone, thanks for coming here today. My name is Derek. Um, has everyone gotten one of these Don't Take the Plea Deal flyers? If you haven't gotten yeah. one, please let me uh, share one with you. <coughs> I think they're invaluable um, to protect your, your rights when inevitably you will be arrested. <laughs> So, I came here today at the request of Tom here. Um, we, uh, I came with a couple other activists. Um, here with uh, Damo is behind the camera. Um, he does coplock.org, and uh, yeah, I'm here with Kager. She's on Coplock News. And um, we're going to be talking about civil disobedience. Um, I'm not like a public speaker. I'm not a professional speaker, so I'm just a regular person and I would like to have more like a discussion, dialogue. Feel free to say stuff, because you're all real people, and I don't <laughs> want to treat you like just some screen that I'm looking at. So um, I guess I, I would start by saying uh, who I am. I am just a guy from Philadelphia who uh, was sick of the police state, loved to smoke pot, I was uh, dealing back there, and I just had so many troubles with um, being afraid of the police and being afraid of what would happen to me if I was caught or I would take all these precautions like, you know, put, putting stuff in the sunglasses case. And I just got sick of, like, <coughs> hiding what I'm doing because I knew I wasn't hurting anyone and you guys probably all feel the same way. And you know, if you're showing up to a normal meeting, you know the statistics about how safe marijuana is. And it's, it's definitely not hurting anyone. And um, prohibition, of alcohol ended, what, 80 years ago? And the whole line was like, prohibition doesn't work, prohibition doesn't work, and everybody knew that. Everyone was seeing the trouble that it caused in their lives. Um, but here we are with prohibition of like, all kinds of drugs today. If drugs are even being invented where they're, they're being um, scheduled, like schedule one, like right after they're a research chemical. So I, I just think that's crazy, and the only way I've thought of to make it stop is to just do my own thing, ignore the, the men with guns, um, because they look ridiculous, uh, especially when they're on camera. So I moved up to from uh, Philadelphia to New Hampshire to live a freer life. I felt like if I was moving uh, to a place where there are other people who are, are willing to disobey the men with guns, then I'm a little bit safer um, when I do the same thing. And I wanted to support other people who are disobeying men with guns. Um, politically, I, I feel like I should fill people in. I'm an anarchist or a, an anarcho-capitalist or a voluntarist. They're all different kinds of names for what I believe politically, if you can call it that. But basically, my whole gist is like, you're the king and master of your own life. And if you're not hurting anyone, then good on you. That's like we got no no business with each other. Um, if, if you're like punching people, if you're punching me, then it's a problem. I don't I don't use violence. Uh, I only want to uh, advocate for voluntary interactions uh, between individuals. So that's just like where I come from. I'm not trying to push like, oh the. Democrats are, are going to legalize marijuana. I don't care what the Democrats do or the Republicans do or the people in office because they're not, in my opinion, interested in a free life for any of us. Um, I think that they are controlling uh, people that they don't even know. And they do it by threatening uh, men with badges and guns to come in and knock down your door and take you into a cage. Um, I don't think that benefits anybody. And I think you would agree. So, civil disobedience. I think everyone knows what civil disobedience is. We've all seen the civil rights movement uh, videos um, where Rosa Parks is uh, sitting in a um, chair that she's not supposed to sit in. And so that put into action another man with a gun who had to come and, and tell her that she's bad. and. Uh, take her fingerprints and make sure that she's not going to commit any crimes again. And if she does, they can find her. So it's just insane um, that that anyone gets arrested for that stuff. Um, so, but I, I feel like civil disobedience um, kind of like, tapered off after the civil rights movement. I don't know. Has anyone seen anything like major 
civil dis uh, going on over the past like 30 years. I, yeah? I mean, big marijuana <coughs> rallies where everyone's smoking lots of pot. That's, That's my crazy. favorite. I my love those. Too. And yeah. it's wonderful to see that the only time it can happen is only when there's a ton of people there. Or else the police will just go through and bag everyone. Right, where you have the, the support of your brothers and sisters exactly. who are like, Hey. There's more of us than them with the guns, so we might have a chance here. Right, so that's that's huge. Um, having having numbers and civil dis uh, definitely helps it go off without a hitch. So of course there are, there are civil disobedient acts that happen every day where people just get arrested and then it's uh, just another news story of like, okay, a guy was caught with pot and he's in jail for five years or seven years, whatever it is in this state. And, to protect him from himself, that is. Right, but if you're, right, or to protect society from the harm he would do going to the convenience store and getting the money. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great. I think there needs to be, I, I would like to see more civil disobedience uh, going We're on. We're seeing that more now with like the Occupy Wall Street movement, I would say. It's probably a big one coming up now. But yeah. before that, definitely, we haven't seen much before that. Yeah, and thanks for jumping in, because I, I think that um, that's another really exciting thing that's going on now. Uh, with the Occupy movement, it's easier than ever to do civil disobedience wherever you're at. You can just go to the nearest city and live your free life as whatever you want to do that's not hurting anyone, then feel free to do that. And there are a bunch of cameras there, which is the, the most important thing, I think. The resurgence of civil dis, um, that I hope to see in this this year and throughout the next couple of years uh, will be possible because everyone has a camera. Like, who has a camera on their phone? That's awesome. Like, good for and good for you guys for for carrying a camera with you everywhere you go. Because I think the police are, are scary people and they they can do things that will um, violate your rights as a human being. Um, and when you catch them doing those things on camera or even show them that you have a camera, it discourages them from violating your rights because they'll be held accountable for it. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I always carry at least one video camera with me because um, the, the day I was arrested for smoking pot in the park, I wasn't expect like I wasn't going in there to do civil disobedience. Like I was, because I go into the park every day to smoke at 420, but like I wasn't expecting there would be a problem this time. So has has anyone seen the uh, give peace a chance video? Does, does anyone know like what I've, what's going on? Why like all right? Then I think it's worth it to see that um, <coughs> so you can get caught up with like what it is I do when when I do activism. So um, while this is loading, I'll just share with you that I've been arrested for civil disobedience three times. The the first time um, was. Uh, I was filming in City Hall, and a bailiff told me to stop, and I thought that I thought it was well within my rights to, to film what was going on in a public place when I'm filming uh, officials who are paid for by um, money that's stolen from me, so I should be able to film what they do when they're at work, and um, but the police disagreed. I'm just going to unplug this and replug it back in. And I didn't screw it it's so little. Um, so I, I was taken down to the police station for being a naughty boy and filming the people that I pay um, in a public place, and and that really lit a fire under me because I was like, wait a minute, like this is really wrong. I should be I, like I haven't hurt anyone, I haven't done anything, and this stranger is putting his hands on me and bringing me places that I don't want to go. And like, if he were anyone else who didn't have a badge, that would be like a huge assault on, on my person. Like that would be a kidnapping, quite literally. Some stranger comes, puts his hands on you, takes you to a cage, that's kidnapping in my book. I don't, I don't know if anyone cares if the, the guy had a badge on, because I didn't know his name, and I, that didn't make a difference to me. I didn't think it was honorable at all. Um, and then the, the second time, I was arrested for civil disobedience. I was throwing a dance party in the gazebo right here in the center of town where I live. And I just thought, I, I'm a person who likes to dance. So there aren't a lot of dance clubs in Keene, New Hampshire. Um, but 
I thought if I bring the dance party to the town, maybe people will show up and we'll have a good time. And it was a great time. And we were dancing, listening to music. There were like lights, and it wasn't that loud. You could definitely hear it, but it wasn't killing any of the businesses around. And um, the cops came and thought that the right thing to do would be to take the equipment that was playing the uh, sound, the audio, and to take me over to the car where uh, he had driven up in. And um, when I said that I felt like I was being kidnapped and that uh, I didn't want to go with him, he thought the right thing to do would be to mace me in the face. And so he, that's what he did. Um, th these people need to stop. And, and the only way they're going to stop is if they're caught on camera. So um, let me just show you what it looks like when you catch these people on camera um, for doing something peaceful, and then they try and stop you. All right, let's see what we can do here. Mm -hmm. 